An earthquake centered in Indiana woke up many here in West Tennessee and across the Midwest. Several of the drivers I spoke with tell me they've dealt with ice and snow before and are prepared if anything accumulates on the roadways. A local chapter of the NAACP calls a special meeting this weekend to denounce racial slurs found painted inside a home once rented to a black family. Presidential rivals Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton tried to explain recent controversial remarks during a tense debate last night. Well, a fire tore through this apartment building behind me shortly after 1 o'clock this afternoon off of Old Hickory Boulevard. It was just two weeks from today that tornadoes blew through the campus of Union University. The message of tonight's special chapel service was unity and renewal. Today we learned more specifics about the storm from county and city leaders. We also talked with families who say early warnings and quick actions save their lives. It was just a big white funnel and you could see it and about the time my ears started to pop, my dad was like, get inside, get inside. Zach Cummings' family was lucky. Their home sustained no major damage in Tuesday's storms, but some of the homes in the Walnut Trace North subdivision didn't fare so well. Josh and Christian Roberts' home was nearly demolished. In face, the Madison County EMA says the tornado damaged more than 500 other homes in the county, 72 of which were completely destroyed. Kristen Roberts recalls grabbing her 9-year-old baby and jumping in a closet just before the storm hit. I went and got the baby. He was already asleep in bed. Went and got in the closet with our radio, and probably two or three minutes later, our ears started popping, and we just got down on the floor and started praying, and just praying that the Lord would protect us, and he did. Damage to homes and businesses in Madison County is estimated for now to be about $47 million. Many neighborhoods like Walnut Trace North are now being patrolled by Jackson police officers to make sure families can leave their homes without worrying about looters. Josh Roberts says he and his family survived by the grace of God and with help from his neighbors. And we've had nothing but wonderful neighbors and friends and, and employers and co-workers who just showered us with support and love. And so we couldn't be happier that we're here in Jackson. Governor Bredesen toured damaged areas in Middle Tennessee today. He's scheduled to tour Jackson and Madison County tomorrow morning. ABC 7 Eyewitness News reporter Sean Fawcett spent much of the day today in Henry County and brings us the story. Sean. Brad, the victim of the crash was a familiar face in Henry County who will be missed by many. The plane went into a spiral and went straight down from there. The small aircraft crashed just outside of Paris Monday morning shortly after 10 a.m. The pilot, Joel Pennington of Cottage Grove, died when his experimental lightweight aircraft went down in this field near the Yoder Brothers slaughterhouse. On arrival, uh, deputies did find a single engine plane, crop dusting plane, uh, had crashed into a wooded area here off Briar Patch Lake Road. Pennington flew aircraft for more than 40 years. Him flying his crop duster was a familiar sight in Henry County. Joel was a, a very um, influential person in the community. He was very involved in the community. Uh, he was uh, always there to assist people whenever they needed him. Uh, he was also an accomplished uh, pilot. Uh, he flew uh, uh, airplanes and also helicopters. Simon Yoder, who owns the property Pennington was spraying during the crash, saw no signs of anything going wrong as the experimental aircraft flew over his fields. I was watching him spraying this morning. And I thought he was through, so I went on to town. And when I came back, boy, uh, I seen Elsie coming up, running up here. And, and I, I said, what's, when the beef come out at the slaughterhouse? I, you know, I couldn't understand. She said, no, the spray plane went down. And, uh, and said it was back here in the woods. He said, I heard it crash. The FAA and NTSB have not yet determined what caused Mr. Pennington's plane to crash. It's still under investigation. Sean Fawcett, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Brenda Couch's family hoped Bond would be denied for her estranged husband. But today a judge did set Bond at $1 million, a figure they fear is not large enough. Now this is a murder. Family members say jealousy might be the motive behind the shooting of Sammy Gary, the boyfriend of Brenda Couch. Her estranged husband, Carl Couch, is charged with first-degree murder. Brenda's mother, Judy Beckham, worries Couch may follow through on threats made to her family if he posts bond. Uh, the 
the children are too scared to even go to the bathroom by themselves because they know their daddy will carry out the threats he's made, and he will. Now that we found out he just made a million dollar bond, or the bond, it's very scary. Brenda Couch's family says they have no faith in Hardin County's law enforcement. Brenda's sister, Judy Hammock, is in shock about the court's decision. I don't think any man who shoots a man in cold blood, who's done nothing to him except be good to his soon-to-be ex-wife and kids, that's all Sammy's guilty of, is loving my sister and her kids better than Carl could, and he couldn't live with that, so he shot him in cold blood. Bond was also set at a quarter million dollars for Couch's girlfriend, Tina Jensen, who is being charged as an accessory. However, some close to the situation feel both sides had a hand in what culminated into a deadly situation. Two wrongs don't make a right. This shouldn't have never happened, but BJ should take her part in it too. She had a part in it, and there's a man that was buried, and he should be here living right to this day. For Couch and Jensen are scheduled to appear in court again next Wednesday. We'll keep you updated on the latest developments in this case. Sean Foss at ABC7 Eyewitness News. The couple charged in the murder of a Jackson businessman and an associate returned to court this morning. 24-year-old Eric Middleton and 25-year-old Mary Thompson appeared for their preliminary hearing earlier today. Middleton is charged with killing 53-year-old Bobby Perry and 29-year-old Andrika Manning last month. Investigators say Thompson helped him drive the bodies to Mississippi, where they were later found in a field. We'll have the latest from the hearing later today on ABC7 Eyewitness News at 5 and 6. A Hardin County man is accused in a deadly shooting, and he returned to court yesterday. However, the judge delayed the hearing until next month, so 42-year-old Carl Couch could hire an attorney. Couch is charged in the shooting death of Sammy Gary. His estranged wife's family believes the shooting was sparked by a new relationship between Gary and Brenda Couch. Carl Couch remains behind bars in lieu of $1 million bond. Henry County authorities say they have the man responsible for a deadly shooting in Buchanan. Investigators say 63-year-old Larry Biggs shot and killed 37-year-old James Hill inside a home on Kirk's Trading Post Road Tuesday night during an argument. Biggs is currently being held without bond. He's scheduled to appear in court later today on a second-degree murder charge. Out of Weekly County, the investigation into a pharmacy burglary continues. The CVS uh, pharmacy in Martin was burglarized earlier Tuesday morning. Investigators say the thieves used a large rock to shatter the front door of the store located in the University Plaza Shopping Center. Deputies found boxes of over-the-counter medicine scattered across the floor. The store says it's trying to determine exactly what was taken, however, an inventory is underway. This robbery is just the latest in a rash of pharmacy break-ins spanning from Greenville, Greenfield rather, to Milan to Lexington. All of those have occurred since the beginning of March. Drug officers from across the Mid-South are in Jackson this week along with their furry four-legged partners. Jackson's Omen Arena has been converted into a training center for the officers and their dogs. More than 20 canine units from at least five states will participate in the three-day training event. The teams are splitting their time between classroom studies and hands-on exercises. Drug officers say canines are one of the greatest tools in the fight against drugs. Any time that they can get training like this, uh, especially something with the practical exercises and uh, different levels of difficulty and things like that, you know, they they all seem to, to really enjoy those types of, of, uh, of situations. This is the second year Jackson has hosted this training session.